I'd like to call the uh, call the order the uh, uh, meeting of county commissioners uh, for tonight. We do have a forum here. All the commissioners are present, and while I'm doing a call the order and talking about commissioners present, I do want to recognize we've got a special guest um, sitting down at the end over here, uh, Miss Haley McDougal. Um, she is a King Mountain High School um, senior this year, and she is uh, job chatting with me uh, uh, for a month or so. So, uh, Haley, we uh, honored to have you up here with us tonight. Next item on the agenda is um, uh, our invocation, and for that, we've asked um, uh, Pastor Alton Bill if you'll come up and lead us in prayer. And we'll do the Pledge of Allegiance after that. And this is our Commissioner Allen for the news that. All right, let's pray. Father, I thank you for the privilege to be a resident of Cleveland County. Thank you for our elected officials that are here tonight. Lord, I pray that you give them wisdom. Lord, that you give them a sense of justice. Lord, help them in every matter that they handle not only tonight, but this year. I pray that you help them to do that, which is in the best interest of our citizens. That, uh, Lord, you help them and guide them in the decisions that they make. Many of us in this room tonight have no idea of the pressures and, Lord, the things that they experience. And so we pray that you bless and guide in this meeting. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Mr. Allen, here to uh, recognize the group for the Pledge of Allegiance. And we also we have the uh, Girl Scouts group from 20307. Is that correct? Uh, they are here for, uh, working on their badge and um, we want to introduce them tonight. We have uh, Carly Bubbler, Gracie Ray, Jamel Trejo, Ryan Carr, and Emily Sibley. Um, they are working on their badge, which is uh, their government? I'm sorry. Inside, government. Inside government badge, which they attend, uh, either attend a meeting, they, I guess you get the badge, they attend a meeting, or they also need to do a poster. And they also need to talk to elected officials or visit the city or, or, or uh, uh, town commissioners or government officials' location so they can better understand how the, how the government works. And that's what they're here tonight. They have a choice of being here or going to their meeting when they chose to be here with us. And we certainly appreciate our people here. And they're going to lead us with the Pledge of Allegiance. Next item on the agenda is recognition of elected officials. I see some elected officials out there. If you would please stand up and, and uh, introduce yourself, we'd appreciate it. Uh, Alton Beal, Mayor of Lattimore. Mike Hoffman, Mayor of Laurel. Good to see you all tonight. Thank you for coming out here. Next item on the agenda is recognition, recognition of veterans. Any veterans that are present today, if you please stand and be recognized, we'd appreciate it. 
tonight for allowing me the opportunity to address them. Uh, as an elected official myself, I learned the importance of communicating with my constituents and ensuring that their voice is heard. As a Christian and a minister of the gospel, I've learned the importance of praying for elected officials as they bear 
a heavy responsibility that is on them from day to day because every decision made by elected officials has the potential to impact many lives. While reading the Shelby Star last fall, I came across the article revealing plans for a possible casino in Kings Mountain. My heart was saddened to think that an industry that will bring such negative uh, impact to both Kings Mountain and Cleveland County was being considered for our area. Uh, having ministered on Indian reservations and in the state of Nevada and several places, uh, I've seen firsthand the effects of gambling on both individuals and society. While preaching in the state of Washington last September, I became suburban about the matter that I composed a letter for the commissioners and sent it via email and U.S. mail. And my letter received two simple thank yous and a verbal acknowledgement that it was received, but other than that, I heard nothing. In my previous written exchanges with other officials, I've received written responses that acknowledge my concerns and express the viewpoint, whether it be agreement or disagreement, of the elected official. And since I received virtually no response, I thought it would be best to come to you in person tonight. In an undated letter submitted with the Catawba Indian Tribes application for a land trust, the five members of the council or the commission sitting before us tonight uh, on the, uh, wrote a letter, and I quote as it started, on behalf of the citizens of Cleveland County, North Carolina, we write to enthusiastically and emphatically express our strong report for the Catawba Indian Nation's proposed economic development project, which will encompass an entertainment complex and a gaming center in Kings Mountain, end of quote. When I read the statement, I was very disappointed. Local media coverage seemed to indicate that commissioners had no position in conversations uh, that I and myself had had with board members seemed to indicate that things were not very decisive yet. Uh, after reading the letter, I felt that my assumptions proved to be false. As a citizen of Cleveland County, I and many others want to strongly express our disapproval for such a project in our county. I feel that your letter does not accurately reflect the feelings of the entire county or in my estimation even of Ashley Jordan. I would like to request that the Board of Commissioners allow concerned citizens an opportunity to have a future meeting, or in a future meeting rather, to give an organized presentation on the evils and negative impacts of gambling on local businesses families and municipalities. The Catawba Indians have had their opportunity to present their case to local officials, and I think it would be on the right to allow the opposition to express their concerns in a gentlemanly and orderly fashion. And I trust that you'll consider my request tonight. A Board of Commissioners that is unwilling to thoroughly examine the negative consequences of gambling upon their constituents will be insensitive at best and uncaring at worst. As I, I'm sorry. Okay, I will. Uh, as I said in my letter from last September, society can choose its vices, but it cannot choose its consequences. I ask you to consider my plea tonight. I'm proud to be a resident of Cleveland County, and thank you again for the opportunity to speak with you tonight. I apologize for going over, and I do have to leave in a few minutes, and it's just because we have an anniversary celebration at Ambassador Baptist College, so I want you to understand my disposition tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Next on the list is uh, Robert Williams. Ben Ford, and state your name, Chris, please. My name is Robert Williams. I live in Boston. Hope you guys know where I live. I've spoken here before. Uh, I'd like to say I agree with you guys when they ask for something to come on with uh, us as officials. This is, this is something that needs to happen. Limited, limited people that come before you. Such, such a major impact as what these guys are talking about. I think it's an insult, I think these guys talk a little bit more, and I think it would be another insult if you didn't let them have the time to, to have the public uh, airing of their grievances. Now, that being said, the reason I asked to come for you, and I have two reasons, I don't know if I have to touch on you, but uh, the one is your package that you put out. Uh, has some information about the tourism in Cleveland County. And also, the Shelby Star had an article uh, editorial yesterday that basically said the numbers don't lie. Well, I look at the numbers. I'm a number person. I come up here and quote numbers a lot. And I found that what I saw in the numbers was that there was a significant decrease in, in occupancy tax between 2011 and 2012. So the numbers, if, if we base our 
our um, projections on the impact on the county and now occupancy tax, which is probably the only real good hard number. You guys raise the tax, you collect it, you know what it is. Uh, and it went down, according to your records. I don't know the reason for that. It went, it did go down in, in uh, November and December, but those months typically when people are traveling, not necessarily touring places. So maybe this, this uh, item on the agenda will be able to explain a little bit better uh, and why the numbers we indicate you have occupancy tax goes down. That's the basis for your calculations. The calculations should show the impact goes down too, as you see there. The second thing I want to say is, uh, if I have time, is uh, recently there was an announcement about a new power plant being built in King Canal. And a lot of people were taking credit for it. But I'm in the power plant business, and I know why the plant was located in uh, King's Mountain, because you've got a Intercontinental gas line going right through there. You've got a transmission line that goes across it, and you have a source of water close. And uh, it was termed for win win situations. Well, these guys came because of those considerations. They don't care about our schools, they don't care about our industry, they don't care about our unemployment. They care about building a power plant where it's best to build a power plant. And that was those three reasons gas transmission line and water and the water situation that I'm a, I pay taxes to the Cleveland County water system and by you guys spot annexing Kings Mountain you cut Cleveland County water system out so there weren't the losers in the bad uh, all right commissioners on the, the next item on the agenda is uh, uh, consent agenda and for that, I'm going to go to you, Mr. Richardson, our campaign. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Members of the board, several things that are in the agenda tonight for your consideration. Item A, please uh, note that you have got minutes from previous meetings on February 4th, February 18th, both of those meetings for your consideration and approval this evening. Item B, uh, from tax administration, would be the February collection report uh, and year to date for fiscal year 13-14 for February uh, the tax assessor is reporting 94.19 percent of taxes collected year to date. Item C uh, under tax administration for tax abatement and supplements for the month of February abatements totaling $11,756.47 and supplements uh, to the total of $15,332.86 for the month of February. Finally, item D is the monthly budget amendment for your consideration for this evening, and that would be from the Sheriff's Office, budget amendment number one <coughs> in the amount of $10,736, and this budget amendment would allow the Sheriff's Office to spend drug forfeiture funds that are received uh, for the purposes of uh, staking out two vehicles uh, within the fleet, within the Sheriff's Office fleet, uh, to give them the necessary upfit to put them on the road and, and ready for operation. That concludes the consent agenda. Happy to answer any questions. Commissioner, you heard the consent agenda. Is there any questions for the county manager? discussion. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is uh, special recognition. This is a, um, uh, uh, an enjoyable time for each one of our meetings tonight, especially. Um, we've got some friends here. Um, uh, I've got Danielle. Uh, is here Danielle Phelps. Uh, she is a good friend of mine. She organizes uh, several different um, talent pageants. Is that correct? Scholarship pageants. Scholarship pageants. And uh, tonight we have two of the, the most recent winners of those pageants. And we've got Ms. Rachel Mauer and we've got uh, Ms. Molly McKinney here. And we would like to present them with some uh, certificates from this board, um, also some pens. And we have another uh, uh, 
Ralph Winter here is with us as well. Um, we would like to introduce the three of them. Commissioners, if you'd like to go down, we can present these. Jason Macy is Rachel's Carolina Princess. The Miss America organization has a little sister program. Molly's little sister, MJ, was not able to come tonight, but this is Rachel's little sister for the year. So she travels and learns to do the things that Rachel and Molly did throughout the year. And she had a lot of fun doing it, right? And uh, this, these certificates, we've got one for each of our Shelby winners. And this one is for Rachel. And Rachel, this is not the first one I've given you. Did you, did you get another one? With, aren't you another crown winner as well? For Miss Shewa. Yes. Yes, she was. That's right. That's right. So uh, I was honored to see her in, in several pageants. So um, this is a, um, it, if you haven't had a chance to go out to one of these pageants, they're a lot of fun. Um, these ladies work extremely hard, as well as the staff. And I see Danielle's son back here as well. He worked hard for the last one, um, Austin. Um, but this is something that brings people from the whole region in here. Um, how far away did you have people traveling? Uh, we have people as far as Fayetteville that came in, and we awarded over $112,000 in scholarship money. Gardner Webb was. Uh, they were our senior. largest. Gardner Webb was our largest donor, as then Cleveland Community College, and then Speed Williams, who also was a former Miss North Carolina who was a part of our program, was also a scholarship donor. So Molly is going to be able to go back to grad school at Gardner Webb with no worries about funds. She's going to have some funds to pay off former college bills. And then our first runner up in the pageant is also going to be able to return to Gardner Webb because she had to pull out due to some personal financial issues. So she's going to be able to return to Gardner Webb with that scholarship money. It is amazing. If you, if you look at the number of uh, pageant winners that we've got in Cleveland County um, from every level, too, I mean, from very beginning, just getting into the pageant, all the way up until we've got uh, this United States. Um, actually lives or is from Cleveland County. And we're proud to have the first Miss North Carolina ever is from Lawndale, North Carolina. She was Miss North Carolina in 1948 and is still alive and is involved in giving me her opinions on what we should do. Commissioner, do you have any comments? Anything you'd like to say? Uh, Molly, I have a uh, certificate I'd like to that to you on behalf of the commissioners also. And this young lady can also sing and she is her talent in the Miss Shelby uh, contest, uh, opera. And I'm sure everybody in here speaks Italian fluently. <laughs> uh, but she sang it in Italian and uh, you made two mistakes because I speak Italian. For those of you who don't know, my real dad is here, but this is my second dad. Yeah, he knows it's a song. There's the story with Molly, too. She's very talented and, and quick on her feet, and besides being beautiful, uh, we were entertaining the bid to host the American Lincoln World Series back in. 2010, and we we're hosting a town forum at the community college and open to the community citizens. We had a full house, great crowd, and so we had the colors and everything. And I'm prone to procrastinate and do things at the last minute, and I forgot to have anybody do the national anthem. And I said, "Oh, Lord, here we are, getting ready to go we'll march into the auditorium with a bunch of veterans and people from the national office." And I said, "We don't have the national anthem." This gal says, I'll do it. Mm -hmm. Stepped right up and did the national anthem a cappella right in front of the whole crowd. Talented and she's my second daughter too. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Anyone, anyone else have anything to say? I commend all of you for your hard work. And I know you have some big shoes to fill here, but uh, thank you very much. You are beautiful ladies, and uh, it's not easy to do what you're doing. So uh, that's not congratulations. We're going to get in touch with all of you guys and help us with interviews. Both of these ladies have to do a 10 minute stand up interview in front of a panel of 12 people. Um, so if anybody's got lots of ideas, 
Um, there's also modeling has the opportunity in June when Molly and Rachel compete for the state title. There is a people's choice where you can vote online and vote. So we're going to vote Molly into the top 10. Rachel doesn't get that option, but Molly does. So we're going to get her into the top 10 and bring home the Miss North Carolina crown once again. So thank you all. <laughs>
and we don't have all of our 2013-14 numbers in, which is what we just started, and really only got our January numbers right before this meeting, so I didn't have time to plug those in. But all of our figures from the North Carolina Department of Commerce are really based on that 2011-2012 period. Keep in mind we do that from June to July, of, uh, for July to June through June. So it's, it breaks the year in half, that's why we have it divided that way and not just even years, because if, if they don't come in that way and they're not measured that way. So that's why you have to break that up. But by far, 2011 to 2013 has just been earth shattering. We're coming in a little bit lower for 2014 so far based on the numbers that we have. A lot of that has to do with the economy. The uh, hotels have had to, at one time, they were really increasing their rates. The average daily rate of each hotel room had been up, and now the economy uh, is warranting that they lower that a little bit. They are not anywhere near back down to where the 2008-2009 occupancy or uh, ADRs are. They're continuing to keep them higher, but and we're looking at probably a three to four dollar a room night raise or increase in that when we really get into our tourism season. April through October are our really strong tourism months. We tend to go really, really down low during November, December, and January, but we've had a fabulous, fabulous winter so far. For us, it's been great. And now that we're seeing more construction, we're seeing a lot more of that kind of uh, hotel overnight stay as well. Those, the spending, overnight spending on that goes down just a touch where um, tourism that comes in for sporting events or for leisure travel, their average spending is higher. Uh, free media and promotion, we have really, really made a very conscious effort in the tourism division to attract media attention. Um, thank you, American Legion World Series, for giving me ESPN because that is going to be tremendous. Uh, some of the things that we do is we host tours. We try to get people to come in and tour with us so that they'll go back and write articles for us, and that has been extremely successful. We hosted American Bus Association's fan tour, a fan tour is a familiarization tour where people come in and tour our community and then go back. In that instance, and also the North Carolina Motor Coach Association instance, we hosted two groups of people. We hosted tour bus operators. They come and tour our facilities and um, our attractions, and then they go back to their hometowns and to their bus companies, and they schedule tours and sell them, and then they bring busloads of people visit us. And we were really lucky to have the relationship with Destination Cleveland County that we have because the Earl Shrove Museum was still in design phase and when we hosted these tours they did a presentation and showed the slideshows and showed the um, drawings and renderings of what it was going to be and that got some bus companies excited enough to be able to go ahead and start planning to bring tour groups here just based on that information. Now the doors are open we're seeing more people come in and explore learn a lot more about um, what we have and so we're hoping next year to have a whole lot of bus tours. I'd like to see at least eight bus a day and I don't think that's at all unreasonable. <coughs> we also hosted travel riders on those tours. We've also hosted some travel riders through the North Carolina Department of Commerce and then uh, we do Hunger Games film location tours and we have had a lot of media attention from those tours and from having that. The value of that advertising has been about fifty thousand $55,000 of advertising that we did not have to pay for because it was free. There are still blogs of, we like that electronic, we love print, but we love electronic. We love that those blogs are out there. People really rely on that because it's an honest opinion from somebody else who has come here and, and experienced this and they're writing about their experience, but that doesn't go away. If you Google, you can still find those articles and a lot of people do that. When they find they're coming to Shelby for something, the first thing they're gonna do is Google it. They're probably gonna do it from their smartphone sitting right there. And we have learned in recent uh, research that, and this, uh, we attended the North Carolina Governor's Conference and this was some research that came out of that, most people will immediately use that cell phone. They'll immediately Google whatever it is that they just heard about. If they're sitting in a meeting, it doesn't matter who's watching, they'll pick up their phone and they'll just Google it. That's their dream device. Then they go back to their laptop or their iPad, whatever other device they have that's larger, maybe hook to a printer, and that's where they really research and plan what they're gonna do, and they'll, then they make their plans to come here. So we're really working on making sure that we have good presence online, and we love those email articles. Um, our national media, we're still being shown on 
Mazar Foods. Uh, the Travel Channel is so kind to us that they show that show every October. We made the reruns because the Livermore show that Andrew Zimmer uh, attended, he did that on and that actually made the best of Andrew Zimmer. And that was a people's choice, that the shows that made the best of Andrew Zimmer. And so that rerun shows every year increasing our, um, our visitors for the Livermore Show. We have national coverage through American Legion World Series. That is going to be tremendous starting this year. Uh, news coverage from the Arnold Shrug Center opening. Travel blogs and articles written by travel writers that we host. That attributes to about $250,000 in advertising, and that's nationwide advertising uh, at no cost to Cleveland County. So we continue to work on that. That's another goal for this year is to continue to keep those relationships with the uh, writers we already have and to keep those relationships going and new ones. And so we're constantly meeting new people in the media and getting new information. Sports. Why do we love sports? We love sports because it is recession proof. We have shown that. We love youth sports because the younger the children playing, the more people come with them. When they're little and they're tiny and they're playing t-ball, grandma and grandpa come, aunts and uncles, best friends. We love that. We love female sports because females bring more people. They bring three to three to five people on average. I haven't seen that half person yet, but <laughs> we know they're out there. So female sports, uh, females also tend to spend more while they're here. Those girls are going to play softball and then go shop. I'm not going to offer up the lake to that. We need that team, but they do. And uh, the ladies that come with them like to shop. They do explore our stores. Male sporting events, they, they bring on the average about two people. But like I said, if we host young events, uh, they bring more people with them. The average spending per household attending a youth sporting event is $213 a night. Seems like a lot, but if you think about it, if you've ever traveled, you're going to pay for a hotel room, you're probably going to need cash, you're going to have to eat while you're here, you're going to probably do something with those kids who keep them busy. You're going to spend probably over $213. But that's the average that they spend when they travel with us overnight. So we love sporting events. And uh, our annual Annually, we host the Tar Heel League State Championship, Regions Archery Tournament, uh, two swimming competitions at Shelby City Park, Garden Web University Sporting Events, which are getting even more attendance and growing. We're seeing a lot more tourism through that. And then the Kings Mountain Triathlon, just to name a few. We have numerous 5Ks and 10Ks and events that are bringing people in uh, all, all the time. I'm learning about new sports events and working with new sporting events. So we're seeing a lot of that. Our economic impact of youth and amateur sports in Cleveland County right now is over 3.5 million. That's direct. We know that our region actually sees a whole lot more than that, somewhere around between 14 and 16 million dollar economic impact for our region. Uh, that is, when we have a sporting event, we usually do not have enough hotel rooms for people to stay here in Cleveland County, and they have to stay outside our county. So some of that spending is spent regionally. What can we do? I'm not going to list all the partnerships. You guys can see that. We, um, we work with a lot of organizations in Cleveland County to try to make sure that everybody is knowledgeable about what's going on and we can all work together. I'll use it for instance. We are going to be hosting the NAACP uh, State Conference next year in 2015. So we're already working with organizations to have exhibits and have things to do make them feel welcome here. We're hoping to keep that event coming back. There's a, several events going on at the Ladrana Center. We're trying to get more involved and work there to make sure that these conferences that we're getting here come back. The handbell choir that was here recently, 450 handbell ringing. I went to the concert. It was amazing. They fell in love with Shelby. Next year, they host a conference that's already designated for another place, but they have said that Shelby is going to be their permanent home after that. They want to come back so that's the kind of thing we're trying to do is keep who's coming and then go get more of them. Responsibilities. Uh, we have every year the Chamber of Commerce holds a planning conference. And this is where chamber members, citizens, and board members come together and map out what the real challenges are and what the real objectives and goals for our chamber staff needs to be. The tourism division. Staff was um, this was the goal. These were goals that were presented to us that came out of that meeting, and some of you were there, so you know. My 
Um, number one responsibility in the six month job description, promote Cleveland County as a desirable destination. I think that really would be appreciated. Uh, work with existing organizations to organize and create events, work cooperatively, cooperatively and cross promote attraction. That's why I am partners with so many people in Cleveland County and so many different organizations because I am the person that helps cross promote those. We can package things together and give someone eight hours, 10 hours, two days worth of things to do based on what we have in Cleveland County and what we have regionally. So we work together, um, even across county line, to help promote what we have here and help people stay longer and spend more money. And then my other part of my job is to report to the county commissioners on the progress of tourism attractions, advancing and cooperative efforts. So that's why I do my presentation for you guys and maybe you can always pick up the phone or send me an email or text and ask questions, which you do, and I appreciate. Is there any questions, anything that I didn't cover that, that you guys are really interested in knowing about? Jackie, I want to thank you for being here tonight because I think it's real important we know the activities that's going on in the county. Um, I guess I'm prejudiced. I think we have a wonderful county for people to visit. And I've actually spoken to some of the bus tour companies and encouraged them to get a bus load to come to our county because we can spend a day or two days of giving them plenty of entertainment to do from the, the businesses, the, the uh, attractions, the Earl's Cross, as I get to, the, uh, the things that are going on with Kings Mountain, the Warm Springs, and I mean, not just in Shelby, but we have, we have, we have walking trails, um, and we have so many attractions that, that could bring the bus like people. So I love it when I see the buses coming into the county, because I know that they're coming, they're doing other things besides attractions, they're like me. And um, there are lines, and that's what we need to help our, our community. And I played softball for 15 years, and I know exactly who follows the softball, especially the female softball players. <laughs> but um, the, that we did. We always have a, a group of us that would come, and we didn't sit at the hot ball field all day. After that game, we went straight to a restaurant to eat, and then we went shopping. So mm -hmm. um, there is a lot to be said about the, the sports activities that come into our county and what comes with them. And, when they're two or three day events, then they, they need somewhere to stay. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so thank you very much for the information you gave us tonight. Any other questions? Is there any other questions? I don't have a quick have a comment, just for verification. When you were talking about the money coming in, regardless of how it comes in and how much we get, the district shared between four people. The county doesn't reap all the benefits of it. The motel, hotel are always an initial pilot. The initial pilot has got a certain responsibility. Too, and I know the King's Month went on there. The King's Month chair is in it, and they got supported. So if they, with the hecky formula that's set up, this hotel motel revenue is shared four ways. It is. And, and that would be King's Month, Bowling Springs, and, and Shelby, and the county. So I thought my eyes opened up and said, hey, where's all the money going? But you know, each one of the municipalities carry a responsibility to do certain advertisements that you have coordinated. But I thank you for what you do. Thank you. Any other comments? Jackie, I'd like to say I, I know uh, a lot of the work we do is behind the scenes. And uh, and I'm surprised at all the things that you're involved in. I called you a couple of days ago, not knowing that you're involved in the Merry Go Round Festival. And you're the person that coordinates for getting the vendors there, I guess. So, and I've seen you before uh, at the ticket counters and, and down in cars come in and uh, give welcome kids out of the welcome center and things like that. So really appreciate all the work that you do. Thank you. Thank you for having me. All right, Commissioners, next item on the agenda is uh, Caston Lincoln, or Caston Cleveland Lincoln MPO locally coordinated transportation plan. And for that tonight we have Jordan Hansen uh, from the Gretz Caston Cleveland Lincoln MPO. Also we have Bob Davis here tonight from the TAC. So appreciate you being out here. Thank you for coming. This agenda item is a requirement from the North Carolina Department of Transportation on behalf of the Federal Transit Administration that um, multi-county areas that we work on identifying their collective needs for transportation projects, public transportation projects, um, that is updated and forms the universe of projects that are going to be used from for grant applications when um, that submits applications to the state they want to see that it comes from the adopted. Maps that were in your agenda packet. One 
Starbucks and Shelby already, uh, where it generally goes along the route and has stops, but also it's allowed to deviate to pick people up along the way. Identify two of those, one connecting the Estonia to Shelby through Kings Mountain, and the other through the northern communities in the county, which makes it route about uh, 10 and 18. And so, and then in addition, some van pools connecting to adjacent job centers, either in uh, Lincoln County or Rutherford County or Spartanburg. And these services would, they're not, the county's not obligated to implement them. Um, this just forms a universal identified need um, that the county can choose from or not choose from to implement using a variety of, of uh, public and private sources to pay for these projects. And so this has already been through Argo County and Lincoln County. So now here in Cleveland County and Gaston County will probably occur in April. Thank you. Any questions for? on the agenda is uh, Cleveland County Property Sale 1410 Stony Point Road. And I would now turn it over to our county manager. Yes, sir, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Members uh, of the board, we have a staff report in front of you this evening that uh, explains that Cleveland County currently owns a 1.2 acre piece of property located at 1410 Stony Point Road. The county has had this piece of property since. 2004, and the county originally purchased this piece of property uh, as identified uh, potential site for an EMS emergency management system base station to serve that end of Cleveland County. Uh, at a later date, a base station was built at the entrance of the Kings Mountain Industrial Park, which rendered this site uh, as a, a non-necessary site for a future base station to serve EMS needs in that end of the county. We continued to hold on to this piece of property, and we were recently contacted uh, by a private citizen in the county who wished to purchase this piece of property. Uh, this citizen has uh, made a bid for this piece of property. We received a bid for $25,000, uh, and at this time, we have checked with other departments across Cleveland County and could not identify a need for this parcel. And at this time, staff would recommend uh, that you authorize the sale of the property at 1410 Stony Point Road to Commissioner Ken Oldsfeld for $25,000. And I would ask the commissioners to earmark this revenue uh, to the Economic Development Capital Fund. Be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Motion to approve and a second. Any other discussion? All those in favor, please raise your right hand. <laughs> Next item on agenda is uh, it's a matter of record. It's Agriculture Advisory Board reappointments. Uh, commissioners, uh, several uh, several meetings ago, we uh, appointed a uh, someone to the Agri Agricultural Advisory Board. At that time, we did not reappoint. Uh, just wasn't brought for us. But we have two people up for reappointment for that board: Mr. Randy Cook and William Thompson. It's a three-year term. And we have no one else that is looking uh, to, to be a member of that board at this time. 
and they have served that work well. Uh, so I'll ask the commissioners what your pleasure is. Take a motion to reappoint. Motion to reappoint. Is there a second? And a second. Thank you. Any other discussion? All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Next on the agenda is public hearings. After a public hearing has been opened, person wish, persons wishing to speak for or against the proposition will be asked to come forward and state his or her name and address. All comments from the public are to be directed to the board. There are no comments directed at other members of the audience. If a speaker has a question, that question is to be directed to the chair. No one will be allowed to speak at the hearing more than, uh, more than once unless the chair recognizes the speaker for a second time for rebuttal of information brought forth after the speaker has spoken. The original presentation by the speaker will be limited to no more than five minutes. The rebuttal presentation will be limited to no more than three minutes. First item under public hearings tonight is zoning map amendment um, 1403, Thomas Johnson, 79 acres on Mount Zion Church Road. And for that we have um, Chris Martin, our zoning administrator. We got a zoning map amendment request from Thomas Johnson. Um, they're requesting to rezone the property from residential to neighborhood business and additional visitors. And it's approximately 79 acres and it's located on Mount Zion Church Road, which is traveling north on two, Highway 226 north of Pope. Um The area is currently zoned residential. It's listed as rural residential on the 2015 land use plan. The surrounding area is rural. It's a larger tracts of land. Um, this, this property, the, the request is so that they can develop as a uh, cell tower, like the previous three current places had. And this property is unique compared to the previous properties in that it's got a road, a public right away that separates the property into two tracts of land, a northern tract and a southern tract. The northern tracks approximately 40 acres. Um, the application has to rezone all 79 acres. Um, you could, as an alternative, rezone the northern track, which is where the proposed development will be. We have two uh, recommendations one from isothermal and one from the planning department. And I, isothermal recommends to approve um, increasing cell coverage and the planning department also recommends to approve and they, they recommend to, to restrict lighting to stroke during daytime and the red light at night in the house. Commissioner, do you have any questions this time for Mr. Uh, Martin? the public uh, hearing open now for the uh, zone map amendment for Thomas Johnson 79 acres. Any of those wishing to speak for or against, if you'll please come forward. State your name and address. Good evening everyone. My name is Pat Sarsfield. I am a Jackson crew from Charlotte. My business address is 227 West Creek Street, Suite 1550, Charlotte. Said this is an application uh, uh, seeking to rezone the property so we can build a 250 foot communications tower. American Tower is the applicant who will, will, will be constructing the tower. The initial uh, transmitter on the tower would be AT&T. Uh, before I get into the, the, the standard uh, information that we provide, 
Uh, one thing that Chris had mentioned that uh, the planning board had recommended uh, certain specifications regarding the lighting on the tower, a strobe in the day and red light at night. Um, <coughs> that is what American Tower typically uses. However, I also wanted to point out that in tab four uh, of the materials I provided to you is a letter from the FAA where they have we're required to submit to them the proposed plans. They inspect them to make sure there is no danger to air navigation. And in doing so, they determined that there would not be, and about approximately two thirds of the way down on the, on the first page of that letter, it says, as a condition to this determination, the structure is marked lighted in accordance with an FAA advisory circular. Um, and it, it's rather lengthy, but you can see it there. It says they require a medium or a medial system. Now, the circular that they're referring to, I did not provide y'all. It's about 35 or 40 pages of lots of technical information. However, uh, when they are referencing the, the med dual system there, that, uh, uh, that is uh, defined in the circular. It's, this system consists of red lights for nighttime high or medium intensity flashing light, flashing white lights for daytime and twilight. So in other words, uh, the, the planning board's recommendation is consistent with what the FAA already requires of us. So certainly um, American Tower will be complying with that request and, and we, um, I just wanted to point that out. Now, uh, as stated, the, the tower will be 200, the proposed tower will be 250 feet. In addition to the initial co-location that would be there for um, AT&T. Uh, the tower is going to be constructed so that it can handle up to three additional transmitters. They'll have three additional slots so that other carriers um, uh, can place their transmitters up there as well to improve uh, their coverage footprint. Uh, AT&T has determined that there are no other alternative towers or other structures that will enable it to provide the footprint that it needs to provide coverage area. Uh, a letter from at and under tab 2 uh, specifies that gives an explanation of the, of the necessity for this and um, on the first page of the letter there's a the second paragraph says site justification underlined and that section is two paragraphs long. The final sentence or the final clause of the second paragraph kind of sums up uh, the, the analysis where it says no other combination of locations or engineering technologies will satisfy this need for coverage that will be provided by this tower. Um, under tab three of the materials I handed to you, uh, they show one, a uh, general map of this specific area, then page two of, uh, of section three shows you where the proposed tower will go. And as you can see, uh, right above the map, there is a legend uh, that shows color of the different coverages that are currently there. And as you can see, there, there is absolutely no coverage whatsoever in that area. Um, so clearly, at and has a rather dire need for, for coverage uh, where this tower would be located. Turning to the third page of, the, uh, of Section 3, you can see what the coverage that AT&T will have and will be able to provide uh, in this area if the tower um, is allowed to be constructed. Now, uh, in addition to just the specific need for its customers uh, to use their cell phones and any other wireless devices that they have, uh, there also is a public safety benefit to having improved, or in this case, actually having any coverage in that uh, Gaston County, for example, and in Lincoln County, I don't have the, the specific uh, statistics here for Cleveland County, uh, but in those two counties, approximately three quarters of all calls to 911 are made on cell phones. And so obviously, and I anticipate with the increased use of cell phones, that number is only going to go up as time goes on. And so if people in this area need to use a cell phone to make a 911 call, we hope that never happens, but we, we know that it does. And by improving or providing coverage out there, it has a public safety benefit for people in the area who may need to use cell phones for emergency purposes. 
Uh, the building, uh, excuse me, the tower complies with all North Carolina building uh, code requirements. Uh, as noted, the FAA has said that it uh, complies or this structure will not interfere with air navigation, so there's no issue there. And, um, <coughs> excuse me, the, uh, it, so there will not be any significant impacts on, uh, on traffic in the area after the tower is constructed. They uh, typically go out there about twice a month to do routine inspections, uh, maintenance, and things of that nature. And so it will provide a minimal impact uh, in that uh, nature. And so based on all that, given the lack of coverage out there and the, the need for it, we would respectfully request that you uh, approve uh, the zoning application so that American Tower can construct the facility. And I'll, uh, I'll be happy to answer any questions. But I've, I've got to tell you, I'm looking at your map, and I know that you issue was the last time we done a zoning for the tower was the fall zone. I'm looking here, is this tower going to fall and be contained on its own property? Is it going to touch someone else's property? So we did ask for a waiver if it was going to fall on someone else's property. And here is next to the road. Yes, sir. It, on the, in this case, on uh, under section one of the documents that I uh, uh, provided, which are the uh, construction drawings, yeah. on page, on, I believe it's the third page of the materials, uh, you can see the uh, general outline of the property, and uh, there's a circle up there around the, the square, which will be the, the least area, and that is the fall zone uh, area that, so the, uh, the tower if it were to fall will not come with it. It will be on this particular parcel. Okay, I was looking at the drawing, but I didn't, didn't see. But the circle is the fall zone, so it will yes, be contained. It will be contained on, on this property. property. Yes, yes, sir. That last one was kind of unusual because the other one had both parcels, but they were actually distinct parcels. But in this case, no, sir. It's all on the one, on the one piece of property. Thank you. Thank you. Any others wish to speak for or against the map amendment? Any others wish to speak for or against? Seeing none, I'll declare the peer, uh, public hearing closed for this uh, item. Commissioners, <coughs> any discussion? I guess my discussion is that I asked the question in the past when uh, the only needed a few acres. Or change it to for the cell car itself. Would it be any problem if we only rezone half of it since there's a road between it and, and probably protect the other integrity for uh, just rural residential? I think we can ask the staff. We have that option either the whole the whole track or part of the track, is that correct? Yeah, the North Carolina statutes give you the ability to rezone that. And the and the cell phone cell tower company has no opinion either way. We're okay with your problem. Well, my in my conversation with the applicant, they said they don't mind out of the way. Any other questions, commissioners? All right. Hearing other questions, I take a motion. I make a motion <coughs> that we size out and rezone the portion that I'm looking at. Top, which would be 33628. That's Northern, where the cell tower is going. Northern Park portion. Yeah, Northern Park. We were on here in Southern portion of the uh, residential home. Okay. We've got a motion. I'll make that a motion. Is there a second? I'll second that. A second. Thank you. <coughs> Any other discussion? All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Next on the public hearing section is a text amendment. Um, it's for telecommunication towers. And um, uh, Chris, if I could have you come up and, and just, from my understanding, if I could just ask a question, if I can cut to the chase on this one. Uh, your recommendation and, and staff recommendation is that we table this until a later meeting to discuss this to, to further investigate some of the 
We will also ask that the state increase the lottery school construction appropriation over time until it reaches 40 percent, as we've seen a significant decrease in school construction funding over the past four years. While we will continue to monitor legislative activity and address other concerns that may arise, particularly where it concerns our priority goals, our primary focus will be on funds to meet the critical school construction needs facing so many of our counties. We will again count on your help to make our case with your local delegation and to tell your county story. Our executive director, David Thompson, will outline how you can help us achieve your goals. Your association has developed a reputation of being a great partner with the state in finding solutions to complex problems. In the last few years, we've worked with state leaders to prevent unfunded mandates of counties and to protect county revenues in the recent tax reform legislation. Your advocacy team worked hard to cultivate a strong relationship at the legislature. But I'll let you in on a little secret. Your advocates do not do this alone. We cannot have achieved any of these goals without the support of you, our county commissioners, from across North Carolina. You are part of the reason why your advocates are so highly respected at the legislature, and we need your help again. We are asking each county board to meet with this delegation prior to the short session to explain the importance of lottery funds to your county. You will soon receive a packet from us with this information that is specific to your county to help you plan this meeting. The best advocacy for elected county commissioners to speak to their elected House and Senate members. Nobody knows your story better than you. Please plan to attend one of your district meetings in the spring to share with us what you heard from your legislators. The intelligence you gather will help your advocates as they work on your behalf in Raleigh. And mark your calendars now for the 2014 County Assembly Day, which will be held May 28th. This is your chance to hear from state legislative leaders and to lobby your delegates here in Raleigh. This year, we are waiving the early registration fee for county commissioners because we need you here. I hope to see you in Raleigh soon. We're also at, the, at our uh, commissioner's reports uh, time, and uh, before we go on to the next, next item on the agenda, um, so. I'll ask if, uh, if there's any commission reports, anything anyone would like to, to report back from these that they're off. I'll just leave it open rather than pick them aside to start from. I'm Jason, I attended the PSS uh, employee recognition uh, program, and I just really, our, our PSS group and staff and employees, we support so hard to um, support our county and do the right thing. They've been under a lot of pressure with some new programs that they had in front of them this last year, uh, some changes in the system that caused a lot of block, block, block down in the system and a lot of overtime work hours that they had to put into it. And um, it's, it's really been tough on them this year, but they have, they've stood strong and I just feel so good. From time to time, I, I'll get a, um, a phone call from someone in the community that's not happy with the situation and our folks will jump in and take charge with them and help them in any way that they can to support the, the folks in our community and they really work hard to do that. Um, we also attended um, the, the um, county commissioner uh, conferences in uh, D.C. and thank you for letting us go there because there's a lot of things that go on as far as none, in addition to the workshops that we, that we attend that on economic development, um, infrastructure, um, working with others. There's, there's a big collaboration that we do, meeting other county commissioners around uh, the state. And the understanding what goes on in their county and in some instances make me very thankful that I'm in Cleveland County because of uh, things that go on that, um, that do not go on in our county. So um, anyway, that's what I have to say about that. Thank you, Mr. Any others? Chairman, I would uh, like to make a motion that we are in the closed session. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, it's authorized by North Carolina General Statute 143-318-B9-86 to discuss a first panel matter. So much for going closed session. Is there any uh, there a second? I'll take that. 
All right, Commissioners, we're back into open session, and uh, during closed session, no action was taken. It's pursuant to a personal act. Uh, next item on the agenda is uh, adjournment. We've already done our um, 